Hi, in this video I'm going to take you through Microsoft's official tutorial site and compare the different applications that you can create using Visual Studio. So I'm assuming that you're probably new to programming and you're confused with some of the options that are there for Visual Studio. So let's take a look at the map here of different programs that Microsoft can allow us to create. So I am in this page here that says Visual Studio Tutorials for C Sharp. And so C Sharp's a good language to begin with if you're trying to learn the first programming steps. So we have several options here. One called a console app, a web app, a universal Windows platform app, a Windows desktop app, and a Windows forms app. Now what is the difference between these and what can you do with them? So in the next few videos, I'm going to show you actually step-by-step -step instructions to create some of these. But let's compare the com different results that we could get to if we followed these steps. Let's take a look at the console app first of all. So I'm going to choose create a console app. And before we touch the keyboard or anything, let's take a look at what these programs look like. So I'm going to scroll down until I come to an example of the program running right here. We're going to get a program that runs in the black box, the console. So that's like it comes from 1950 or something. You can still write software that runs in the console. So down here you can see that we're going to eventually get to a, a place where it says please enter a number, type in a letter, and I'll give you an answer. So that's a console app. Let's look over on the margin here and let's ch check the second one, create a web app. Now if you're brand new to programming, I wouldn't recommend that this is the place you start. Uh, you'd probably start with console apps because of their simplicity. Uh, web app is more complex, but you can still use Visual Studio to create this. So let's go see if there's an example of what their project looks like. So you can see yeah, there's going to be folders and lots of resources that you have to know about. So there's quite a bit more tutorial, but when you're done, you're going to get an app that runs in your web browser. So you can see this one here, it has a web page, it's got the URL at the top that says local host. So that means it's running only on your computer. So you're not, you're not publishing things to the internet yet. Uh, there's another step to transfer your application to a web server. But you're on a local host and you can try out links and you can create simple web pages. So Visual Studio will do that for you. Now in Grand Canyon University where I teach, we don't get to web applications in C Sharp until the third course that you take. So um, that's probably more advanced. Let's go look at some others. So the next one that I would recommend you choose is called a Windows Forms app. And that is pretty simple. You, uh, you could start with Windows Forms as a beginning programmer. So let's see what a Windows Form app will look like. So you're going to get an environment that looks like this. You're going to have Form 1 and an empty uh, form. When you're done, you're going to put a button on it. And I think this one creates a simple message called Hello World. So a Windows Form app will not work on the internet like you would expect. It's more like the applications that you would run, such as Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, or Calculator. That is the equivalent of a Windows Forms app. Um, you can see I'm running in Macintosh, but it's the same idea. This is a Win, Win Forms app for Macintosh. So I would recommend, if you're a new programmer, that this is a good place to also start. As a matter of fact, in the first course that you're going to be taking here, if you're a Grand Canyon University student, you will be making Windows Forms apps. And so the next video will take a look at how to make this Hello World. Now there are other apps av available as well. So here's one called the WPF. So WPF and the one above it, UWP, are enhanced versions of a Windows Forms app. So all three of these uh, different types of applications, the Windows Forms app, the WPF and the UWP, they all serve the same idea. You're going to create an application that runs on your desktop and they are slightly different designs. So uh, Windows Forms is the simplest one and that's the one we use in class most often. But if you're interested, WPF has a similar approach. Let's go see what a project looks like. So here is a form that you're designing in WPF. So you get the same idea here. You got a, a form at the top but then there's this uh, language of design down here. So you can see that this is uh, a language called XML, Extensible Markup Language. It's, it's a little bit like HTML if you're into web browsing. And so this here is the complexity. So the user interface or the placement of buttons and pictures and uh, menus and everything 
is all in this language here. So it is definitely more complex, but you get the same result. Now, what, do, what advantages are there to creating this uh, strange language here? Well, you can be very precise. You can have more elegant designs, so your uh, colors and shadows and things like that look better. But at the end of the day, your application is still going to be very similar. You're going to have buttons, you're going to have things on the screen, and it's going to run on a Windows desktop. So in my experience in developing software with students, uh, we don't even go to WPF. Even though it's newer uh, and, and supposedly an improved version of creating a Windows app, it involves extra planning and extra design. And in Windows Forms, you just throw your button on the screen and it works. So it certainly lowers the barriers. The Windows Forms lowers the barriers to entry for a, a new programmer. Let's look at UWP. So Universal Windows Platform. Now the ironic thing about this is that it's far from universal. So if you remember the Windows 8 user interface, remember there was Windows 7 and then there was Windows 8 and then we skipped to 10 for some reason. So the standard desktop was a uh, was in existence and then Microsoft invented Windows 8 which is like the tablet interface and so you had these big square buttons and you had touch screen interfaces and so they thought well we need to create a environment to program those kind of applications so the Windows universal platform turns out to be not so universal it's just for tablets primarily let's see what a, an app looks like so if we scroll down to see what the app is going to entail, you're going to have the same XML uh, language, so it's going to be similar to a WPF. But when you get the, when you get the app running, you're going to have just a tablet-looking thing. So you can see here's the example of Hello World. The margins of the app go right to the edge of the screen. And the buttons are flat in their appearance and it's kind of a tablet thing. So if you're thinking of making a tablet app for Microsoft tablets, then a UWP is probably what you want to go with. So the uh, universal part I think is kind of a funny name because it works on Windows 8 and it works on tablets and most everybody else just uses the other two. So I would recommend if you're a new programmer stick with Windows Forms. As a matter of fact if you're developing apps that need to run on the desktop Windows Forms has been around for like since Windows XP and it's still in progress. Microsoft supports it and it works great. So you may never find a need to go away from it. Anyway, we're going to create a couple of uh, simple tutorials following these instructions. We're going to make a console app and then a Windows Forms app and that'll be your first experience in Visual Studio.